In this example, we will see how to find the Thevenin equivalent of a circuit which has dependent sources only. Consider this given circuit of interest. The load resistor has already been removed and the terminals of interest A and B are marked. This circuit has a bunch of resistors. It does not have any independent source and it only has one dependent source. When a circuit has dependent sources only, then by default, V Thevenin is equal to zero volts and the process of finding the Thevenin equivalent circuit reduces to just finding R Thevenin. So let's see how we can find R Thevenin for a circuit that has dependent sources only. When the circuit contains dependent sources only, there is only one method that can be used to find R Thevenin and this is the test source method. So according to this method, we need to apply a test voltage or a test current source and then find the ratio of the test voltage and the test current and this gives the Thevenin equivalent resistance. So let's see how we can find R Thevenin. Suppose we apply a 1 volt test voltage source to this circuit. So Vt is 1 volt and then this is the current It flowing into the circuit and we need our circuit analysis task is to find It. We can find IT using either node voltage method or mesh current method. Suppose we use node voltage method, then we can ground this node. The voltage at this node is 1 volt because of the direct application of the test voltage source, which is connected between ground and this node. So we are only left with this node where the vo node voltage is not known. Suppose we call this voltage V2. Now we need to apply Kirchhoff current law at this node and write the KCL equation. So this means V2 minus 2000 IX over the resistance is 2 kilo ohm. And then this branch current is V2 minus 0 over 1 kilo ohm and through the 3 kilo ohm resistor is V2 minus 1 over 3000 is equal to 0. Because the circuit has a dependent source, we need to write the dependent source constraint equation, which means expressing Ix in terms of node voltage. So we can see here that Ix is V2 over 1 kilo ohm. So here we have two equations and two unknowns and these can be solved to show that V2 comes out 0.4 volt and Ix comes out 0.4 milliamps. This completes the node voltage analysis but we still need to find the current IT and this can be done using the node voltages as follows. We consider node A and mark off branch currents as shown here. So we mark off two branch currents I, A and we can call them I1 and I2. So this branch current is I1 and this branch current is I2 and now we can apply Kirchhoff current law to this node. So sum of currents entering I, T is equal to the sum of currents leaving which is I1 plus I2 and these branch currents can be expressed using the node voltage. So I1 is 1 minus V2 over 3 kilo ohm and I2 is 1 minus 0 over 2 kilo ohm. Substituting the value of V2.4 volts here we can show that IT comes out 7 over 10 kilo amps. Now once we find RT, IT, we can find R Thevenin. So R Thevenin is VT over IT. 
So this gives the value 1 over 7 over 10 K. So this is 10 over 7 kilo ohm. So this means this is the value of the Thevenin equivalent resistance. In the test source method, it is not necessary to use a test voltage source. We can also use a test current source and also it is not necessary that the magnitude of the test source is unity. Suppose we apply a test current source here and suppose we choose its magnitude IT as 1 milliamp then we are interested in finding this voltage drop VT across the test voltage source. So now the sub problem is to find VT first and this can be done using any circuit analysis technique. Suppose we are using node voltage method then we can ground this node and now the voltage at this node is actually VT so we can recognize and denote that and the voltage at this node can be denoted say V1. Assume branch currents are flowing away from these nodes and like this and now we can apply Kirchhoff current law to the two nodes. So the equations are V1 minus 2000 IX over 2K and V1 minus 0 over 1K and then V1 minus VT over 3K is equal to 0. Similarly, we can apply Kirchhoff current law to this node. So this is VT minus 3, sorry, VT minus V1 over 3000 or 3 kilo ohm and then Vt minus 0 over 2k and this branch current is assumed opposite to the direction of the current source so we get minus 1 milli is equal to 0. Since the circuit has a dependent source we need to express the variable Ix in terms of node voltages so the dependent source constraint equation is i x is equal to v1 over 1k. Now we have three equations and three unknowns and these can be solved to show that we obtain vt is equal to 10 over 7 volt. And then using this we can find r thevenin. r thevenin is vt over it so this is 10 over 7 over 1 milli and this comes out 10 over 7 kilo ohm as before. So choosing uh, either a voltage or a current test source and any arbitrary magnitude does not impact the final answer and we obtain the same value for the Thevenin resistance. So we have the summary result circuits containing dependent sources in their th behave like a resistance from the point of view of terminals of interest. So here V Thevenin is 0, it is denoted by a short circuit and R Thevenin is this value that we have found.